I am just going to take some of her features and use those to inform my character. Let's take some measurements and make some marks here. So really carefully, always super careful when you're working around the eyes. Sometimes I don't even get all the way to the eyes. Just looking down, uh, so that way I'm not actually poking her, right? That would be really uncomfortable. Um, so I will, I will sort of float it. So now I can just sort of give myself some quick indications there for the outside of the eyes, all right? I'm going to use a bigger tool here to keep it straighter. All right, that makes it easier than trying to draw a line and have it move around a lot. So big spatula gives me that line much easier. So there's the outside of the eye. I want to get some triangulation, right? Triangulation is really important to, for placement. So I'm going to measure from the center of her chin to the corner of that eye very carefully, right? I'm not touching her eye. And then I'm going to measure right there. And then there's that mark. So there's that position. We'll check this side. And you want to check both because, believe it or not, our faces are not symmetrical. They may appear that way, but our eyes, one tends to be higher than the other, closer in than the other. It's kind of funny. I know that about myself because I've sculpted a couple of self-portraits that one of my eyes is actually higher on my face. It's weird, right? You don't tend to notice, but uh, when you don't sculpt that in, if you're doing a portrait, People can tell. They say, yeah, that guy doesn't look quite right. And then you make the eyes off kilter, and suddenly it's like, oh, there it is. That looks better. So now we'll mark the mouth. I want to get that distance from, oops, sorry, Abra. From the bottom of the chin to the center of the mouth. Where is that? And again, just indications, right? We're going to. Our character is not going to have sort of human features, humanoid features anyway. It'll have humanoid features, but not human features. So we want to change that. Now, you know, I'll leave the nose off for right now because I know our character is going to have a different nose. But let's get cheek width. I'm going to measure this really quick. And again, you see how I put my fingers in there, right? So my fingers hit her face before the calipers do. So I'm not stabbing her with these metal calipers. See, if you look down here, you see that that side is still kind of bulgy. So we're going to, that's where that mark hit there. So we're going to take some of that away. Maybe a bigger tool for that. And a little bit on this side. Now looking at her model, looking at the shape of her forehead, right? That nice round shape that she has there. I like that. And I want, I want to put that into the character as well. So I'm going to build in this form. And this is going to start to inform the brow shape, the brow location, which we're going to change a bit and make it a bit more angled, right? You see Abriana's eyes are normal human plane. The outside corners are a little higher, right? That's natural. That's the way they tend to be, but we're going to exaggerate that and really take the angle of the eyes and move them up this way a bit. Give it a bit more of an intensity and take it away from human features and stuff. I like to start by building a little bit of the brow shape before I carve out the hollows of of the eyes. I like to build some of this in. And I'm sort of exploring this character still, right? I did, I did some sketching yesterday after the day was done just to give myself an idea of what this character was going to be, right? I thought she might be a demon character with these really big horns. 
But as I played around with it, I didn't, I didn't like the, the elegance and the balance of, of that. So I sort of changed that design. It's still a very fluid process. Uh, if this was for a specific character that I had art for, then I'd be referencing the art and the model at the same time. In this case, I'm just kind of winging it. So as you see, I'm bringing down the nose a little bit into that shape. And then, Aubriano, oh, you give me like a little bit of a furrow, yeah. So, right, we're not using that facial expression, but we want to pick out that anatomy and exaggerate those forms and get them into here, right? Our character isn't going to have a typical humanoid nose, so you may not get that big furrow, but a lot of these sort of offshoots are really cool and uh, individual to the face, and we want her to have some of that intensity, so we're going to borrow from Abriana's expression and add those into our piece. And just like when we worked on the body, bulking in that, right? You see, I'm still working really rough, big shapes, uh, at least for the face, right? For this size, this tiny little head, I'm still using big strokes. She's going to have these series of horns going back, so I'm going to have some of these furrows pointing towards those those horns as a just a directional line, right? We're thinking about design of the character and we want to think about how these f shapes would form and uh, there tends to be a, a sense of uh, purpose in nature. There's forms aren't just there for aesthetic purposes, or I mean, you know, for mating and that sort of stuff, but they tend to follow anatomical reasons for being there. There's a reason these furrows would be there, and then the, the line of the horns would follow that same, that same line. So I'm thinking about those things as I'm laying in these forms. And you see, it's not the same shapes that are on her face exactly, but by looking and studying what's on her face, I get to see what that would look like. And it lets me know what I can do and what I can push. Otherwise, I'd be making up a lot of little things, which is fine too, right? It's a creature, it's a monster, we don't know stuff, but if we have the model, why not take advantage? We've used her for the rest of this piece, why not use her for the face too? All right, you can relax your brow, thank you very much. All right, so we've got those indications in. Now I'm gonna build in the cheekbones a bit. Right, and again, I'm thinking about the angle of the eyes and stuff on my character. So a lot of this is going to come down towards the middle. Right, everything's sort of moving in that direction. Right, big sort of V's and big triangular shapes uh, in this face. Start with that. Cool. So now. I'm going to check the profile of my, of my figure and start deciding what I want that shape to be. So if I can imagine removing that sort of human nose and seeing what I might replace that with and then where the mouth falls into place, right? So I'm looking at these shapes. And deciding what I want to use and what I want to make up. All right, so I'm going to build a little bit of just a muzzle to start. All right, and, and by muzzle, I just mean that, that you know, pronounced shape of the, of the teeth, not a dog muzzle or something like that, but so that I know how far that's going to come out. And then we'll get into actually sculpting the lips and the soft shapes around it, but for right now, it's just sort of a, a placeholder to indicate depth. So as I'm looking at the profile, right, you're looking this way, I can see how far that's going to come out. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I want to change the nose? I like the shape that 
Aubriana has in her chin, right? That great little pronounced form there. I think that's really cool. I want to put that in the sculpt too. So again, right, picking and choosing. She has a really square jaw, but I think on my character, I'm going to keep it more angular, right? We're talking about all these V angles, right? And if suddenly we bring in a big sort of square jaw, it's not going to fit what we've established. So I'm going to keep that really elongated and, and angular. And there's many ways you can, you can do an eye. You can use little eye forms. Uh, I just use, you know, epoxy putty little balls. Anytime I have extra epoxy putty, I'll make up tiny little balls and uh, just put them in a jar. And then I match them up later and, and use them. Uh, I make, you know, big ones, small ones, whatever I have left. Uh, so I have a variety of sizes. Um, and then I'll carve out the shapes, put the little eye forms in there, and then sculpt the eyes around that. Right now I need to decide, do I want to do it that way? Or do I want to sculpt an eye? Kind of like on the guy behind us, right? Where you can see the eyes and the direction that they're facing. So instead of the blank eye that later will get painted and will give it direction, uh, in the sculpture, it already has that sense of direction and where that character is looking. Either one is good. It's, one isn't better than the other. It's just a matter of preference. I'm also thinking about the, the end of this piece. What do I want to do with it? And I want to mold and cast this thing, so how am I going to deal with those eyes when they're done? If I use eye forms, it's pretty simple. They're going to cast right in. But if I sculpt the eye, I can actually do some cool techniques too by having the irises be really flat and then the pupils paint those in and then using some clear epoxy build up that corneal bulge so it'll actually look like a cool little prosthetic eye in a sculpt this size. So there's some cool things you can do uh, without really needing to you know, spend a lot of money on, on eye forms or do all kinds of stuff, just by painting and deciding how you want to do it. Uh, just little, little rolls of clay. Again, my favorite little tool. It's very versatile. Press that in, shape that. All right, so I want to look at the bottom shape of this eye, right? A little bit of the cheekbone, soft tissue here. And since this character doesn't have the pronounced nose, this bit of, of uh, you know, flesh isn't going to be as pronounced. But we want to indicate it a little bit. I already have there, right? It's just not going to be as deep. But I want to punch that cheekbone just a little bit more so that I get that highlight there. And you can see it, right? You can see that little bit of shine there on Aubriana's cheek. I want to do the same thing here. It also separates the bony forms from the fleshy forms, right? As you sculpt, bonier forms will tend to be harder edged, and then the fleshy ones will be a little softer and keep working in there. So now the other side of the tool, right? The pointier side. This side's great for getting into the little corners and shaping that eye. So I'm going to do left-handed for this side. There's a part of sculpting anything, the whole figure or even a face, where it goes through a really ugly phase. Um, and you look at it and you're like, man, that just doesn't look right. Uh, but it's just part of the building, right? You're just, you're getting there. It's just like if you're building a house, there's a part of when you build the house that it just doesn't even look like a house, right? There's all this weird metal structure sticking out, but it's just, you're laying the foundation. As the house comes along, you start to see walls go up and things go up. It starts to look like a house. Uh, same thing happens with sculpture. I think even in, in drawing and painting, the same thing happens, right? It, it, there's a part of it where it just doesn't look quite right. And right now, we're sort of in the middle of that, right? You might look at this and say, man, that just doesn't look, doesn't look good. Some of you may say, oh, I see that character already, right? Because you can see beyond that. But it's, 
you can't uh, be discouraged when you're working on it and say, boy, it just doesn't look right, because there's a time when it just doesn't look right, and it's part of the process. And it will look right if you just keep going. I like to play around when I sculpt, because I know that I can, I can fix it if I screw up. So I like to see what some of this stuff does, right? So by sinking the cheeks on this face, adding a little more sh you know, shadow and form, I take a look and I say, you know, do I like that? Do I not like that? If I don't like it, I fill it back in. If I like it, I leave it. Or somewhere in between, right? I think the temples are another good place to, to do that, right? We don't want to go completely skeletal on this creature, right? We're not completely showing off the skull, but since she is going to have horns, there's going to be some of that shape coming through, right? You can see it on, uh, if you look at goats and cows and things like that, right? Horned creatures. Uh, you can see their skull really close to the surface, just like with humans, right? But we, we have hair that covers all that up. And If Aubriana had a shaved head, completely shaved, uh, we would see that structure. And if you had she had a uh, horns and stuff like this character is going to have. Uh, you would see bits of that skull poking through, especially in this front part. It's very thin through here, and and we're going to have the same thing going on. All right. So before I move on to the mouth and the eyes, I want to start indicating those horns, just so I get a sense of this character. So. I'm just going to make some placeholders for right now, and I will show you later when Aubriana takes a break how to make some simple horns using epoxy putty. It'll set in like five minutes, and we can just push those right in here, and I don't have to worry about bumping them and ruining these horns every time and having to re-sculpt the horns and re-sculpt the horns. This will give me a cool sense, right? Just for scale, so I know how big to make the other horns. And these are going to scale up as they go back. But uh, also, to just to help me see the character. Right? I want to start seeing this character so that I can decide what kind of changes I want to make. She's kind of a queen character. Right? She's higher up in the whatever tribe or whatever she's in. So I'm guessing that these horns get bigger with the more power she gains, the older she gets. And the young ones just have these little sort of nub horns. And so it's sort of like a, a class distinction. We're also going to have some hair on this one. Aubriana, pull your hair off to one side real quick. She's got this cool haircut where she's taken off you know, the sides there, and she can do these really cool mohawks. That hairdo is really cool, and that's sort of inspiring what I want to do with this character. And we will give this character a really cool mohawk. So visually, right, I want to see how these horns stack up, how they're moving. Yeah, that's kind of cool. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put in some of that, that mohawk as I build this this big shape, right? I'm going to put in some of that that curve in the hair. And just make some indications of that. Maybe even bring some of the hair forward and let it fall in front. And then we'll decide later how long we want to make it. Maybe we'll give her a ponytail sort of thing like a mohawk with a ponytail or maybe we'll just bring it and cut it off short. Right now, I'm going to just do a little bit of a, of a thing there at the end. Remember, this is just a placeholder, right? I'm just looking for the character right now. Like, I think the face could be maybe just a little slimmer still. So I'm going to take that down just a little bit. And then add some placeholder ears, too, because ears really help make a face. We might leave these placeholders on and then just work with them to make the final ear. But for right now, 
I just want to see that silhouette. I want to see what these ears do to this face. Do I need to make them smaller, bigger? Do they need to be out more? You know, if I did that, what would it look like? You know, if I kept them back and sort of tight to the head, what would that look like? That's where we get to play around and have some fun with these, with these placeholders. And then we'll get into the specifics. As we get into detailing, we'll start really breaking the structure of that hair down and seeing what's going on making smaller forms. Again, just like we did with the sculpt, right? We start big and loose, and then we work on subdivision of forms, secondary forms and stuff. Let's talk about maybe some, some nose slits, just to help us out really quickly, so we can see where the shadows on the face are gonna fall. I think those are a little off-center. Let's move those over. I'm gonna redo my center line. All right, and this is something you'll have to do over and over again. Is you'll want to redo that center line. Yeah, so I can see it needs a little more mass on this side. All right, so now I'm going to move down into the lip shapes. And looking at Aubriana, looking at the sculpt, start figuring out, all right, what's that going to look like on this character? Is she going to have human lips, not human lips? I think if she doesn't have all the other human features, we should probably do something with the lips to make them a little different. But I'm going to start with the structure of the basic lips, and then maybe change it. So I want to see the lip shape. It's got that cool bow. I mean, it, it really almost looks like an archery bow. Look how cool that is, right? Our character may even have a, a bow. Later on, we may hang a bow on her right here, right? Wouldn't that be cool? You can mimic that with the, the shape of the lips. Create a, a bow that has the same shape. So I'm building out that lower lip, right? And then there's little, just little tissues down here, right? It's not just a lip floating out there, right? If you actually, if you took the color away from her lip, you would see that the actual form of her lip is this big sort of mass, and then this shape, and then there's another mass down here coming into a little dent. Um, that sort of stuff, right? You see a lot of people forget those smaller forms. All right, so as we get into the details, we're going to look for the lip lines, right? Now, Abriani has kind of small lips. There's not a lot of lip line there, right? Sometimes you see a really pronounced lip line there. Uh, I think on our character, we're gonna push that a bit more and really give her a cool, uh, a cool lip line. And we may need to reference that on, you know, somebody else or from a photo if we need to. Um, I'll probably just sculpt it and make it up as it goes. I've done enough lips in my 18 years. I think I can make up a lip line. Little, uh, what are these called? Clay shapers. Uh, silicone tipped, really soft. Right, the metal one, anytime I, I touch it, it's not going to give, right? The clay is going to give before the tool gives. These, the clay is going to give long before the tool ends up making a mark. So it's almost like working with paint brushes, um, but with little clay shapers. So I can press a little harder. I can get in and push the clay, really, is all I'm doing. And for lips and eyes, this is really uh, a helpful tool, especially at this scale. And almost painting 
See how it lays down on the surface. All right. Maybe make that a little, a little heavier. This soft tissue right there. Same thing on this side. And then for the inside of the eye, this more chiseled shape tool is really great. I can use the back side of it, flat this way, and push into the corners. Let's see those tear duct inside corner of those lids and how deep they, they push, right? They're really far in there. So we're going to do that here. And then I'll do this less successfully lefty. Then we'll Now, just to help me out a bit, I'm going to add some cool stuff. This is my little guitar string rake um, that I made. It's, it's a good little tool for shaping stuff and getting into tight little areas. I've got one side that's smaller, one side bigger. And the rake helps to just keep it from, from cutting the surface. And instead, I'm more pushing and and raking the surface. So I'll do that and then maybe just give a little indication of where she's looking. Yeah. When I'm working on monsters, luckily no one's in the studio when I'm in here by myself working on monsters because I make the strangest noises as I'm working on a beast You'll hear me do all kinds of grunts and moans and snarls on <laughs> that kind of stuff, trying to think, all right, what does this creature sound like? Right? If it talked, it would be, you know, <laughs> hello. Like that kind of stuff, or small voices. Hello. And all that stuff, even though it's silly, it it's really helpful to understand the character, right? We want to know everything we can about the character we're creating, what kind of environment it lives in. That, you know, tells us about the forms and the function, right? Characters that live in a desert climate are going to have different forms. You know, if they live in a jungle climate, they're going to have different adaptations. Uh, so know that about your, about your character and know what kind of features that would lead to and a lot of that's just observation right going going through your nature books and stuff i have a ton of nature books uh, and insect and all kinds of stuff and uh, and i just i just look through them you know like like people flip through magazines and stuff i flip through nature books and just stare at animals and and parts of animals not even the whole thing sometimes just that's a cool form and that's a cool shape or you know that's a cool adaptation that this creature has. Could I put that on a larger form? Design comes from observation. And as much as we like to think we're being original when we create these things, right? Nothing is more original than nature. It's created the most awesome things that we could never come up with in a million years. If no one had ever seen an octopus before, and you described an octopus to somebody, they'd say, that creature can't exist. You're silly. What are you talking about? It has no bones, eight arms, suckers on their things. It can squeeze into a hole this big. It can change the surface of its skin and the color of its skin. It can go walk on land slowly, but, uh, and then down in the ocean, it shoots ink. Like, uh, that makes no sense. Someone would laugh at you and say, you're an idiot. Like, what kind of creature are you talking about? But yet there it is, the octopus, right? It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. It's one of my favorite animals, uh, cephalopods in general. There's no way a creature designer could have come up with something that, that awesome. And so we steal from it though, right? We create these things. We create characters that have these things. Nothing's really original. We just uh, take things put them in a new context and make it original. But the, the parts aren't original though, right? And then one thing I like to do with my characters is 
ever so slightly. Open the mouth. Uh, not a lot. You don't want them to sit there and be like, uh. But uh, having just slightly open mouth gives you the sense that it's about to breathe or about to talk. You imagine that there's, there's something going on there versus just a, a closed mouth character. All right, just that little shadow adds so much, I find anyway. So I always put it in corner of the mouth, right? There's this node, that's what it's called, this little fibrous mass that all the mouth muscles connect to, uh, right in the corner, right? Ariana smile, right? All these forms happen right in that corner, and that little mass, you can feel it on yourself, right? If I, if I feel in there, there's a bump, there's a big sort of fibrous node, right? There's so all these facial muscles come down to that point, and they pull. If she frowns, does this or that, right? Like, right? You can see it pulling down and away. All these muscles grabbing that little thing and pulling it. So in her neutral pose, right, it'll create that little shape just in a in a soft neutral pose. That little shape right there is important. We can't forget those little those little forms. And again, right, knowing anatomy, knowing why that form is there you know to put it in. So again, observation, study. Things that make your sculptures better. I'm also going to be looking at the structure of the neck as well, because I haven't really addressed that very much. So I want to see what these forms are, right? What's happening in here? So looking, right, observing, observing and then marking that on the sculpt. <laughs> 